Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Danae, and I'm here with a message for you. Happy Saturday, 420, if you know, you know, April 20th, 2024. You know, once upon a time, this date would have had a particular significance to me, but today it has a different meaning because, and it does actually collectively so, or universally, I should say so, which is awesome because it can mean, it can mean many different things for many different people, but for me personally, uh, is quite the contrary of how I would have celebrated today um, a couple years ago. You know, even, matter of fact, even last year, I think, I honestly feel like I was trying to remember, but I feel like 420 was the last time I smoked um, last year. So if it wasn't 420, it wasn't long after, because I know by Mother's Day, I was completely cold turkey, like done with it. And I haven't smoked since. Um, and for me, as I've shared before, you know, it's no tea, no shade, because I have nothing against the ganja. I really don't. But it was a personal decision that has panned out. It was a responsible decision <laughs> that um, just made sense at the time. Uh, and it's been good for me, you know, for the past year, at least almost, um, I felt very, I felt, I have felt very clear minded, focused, more energetic. Of course, you know how it can affect your breathing depending on how you smoke, which is where my downfall was. I wasn't smoking through the best mediums, you know, using wraps and things like that. But if you're a more natural smoker, you may not have that issue, which is why I have no issue with the practice as it is. Um, you know, everything in moderation. But as for me today on this 420, I did not celebrate in that regard, but I do certainly wish all those that do a fantastic <laughs> session of a day and celebration of a, of a frequency, you know, hopefully it's a high one, literally a high one. Um, but what, is, what I was uh, speaking about in my last message was the, I said Uranus and Taurus con um, transit. Now, what I was missing was the most important part, which was Jupiter and Uranus conjuncting in Taurus. How can you forget Jupiter? That's the part of it that makes all the difference. Um, <clears throat> that's the conjunction that is pivotal today on this date that we are all sharing the energy and vibration of whether we realize it or not. But it's a, it's a conjunction that hasn't happened since 1941. And it has very intense um, impacts and it reverberates in a, in a myriad of different ways. Like I probably couldn't hit on it all if I tried. So what I'm going to do is um, post uh, a reference of some more information, an article. It's not too long, but it's the source that I trust called astrostyle.com where they talk about it a bit more extensively as to what their outlook, their twins, their twins, and they actually are Sagittarians. Um, and I, I followed them off and on for years. Like they just have a great outlook on astrology, very fresh and fun and uh, you know, pretty hip and trendy for the most part in true Sagittarian form. You know, they just have a real honest approach to and relatable, you know, very relatable approach to astrology. So I'll post a link for that um, down below and I'll also post it on the community tab. Hopefully this video doesn't take too long to post because what I've been noticing lately is that my videos have been taking a long, long time to post. And I don't know why that is because they're no longer 
than what they typically have been, which is about an hour or so, give or take, usually a little more on the give. <laughs> but it's been, I'll, I'll record a video and post it early in the day. And sometimes it's been literally taken all day, you know, almost to the next day to post. So just know like your girl's been posting much sooner than it's been showing up. So for whatever that's worth, it just is what it is. But to keep it brief on um, on this on this conjunction, it's just a powerful one. I mean, you got the planet Jupiter, the planet of luck and expansion and philosophy and um, higher higher learning and um, global affairs and uh, what else can I think of? So many things that Jupiter can. Um, your your beliefs and, you know, your moral and ethical standards and things of that sort, your philosophies about life, maybe even religion or spiritual. Um, and then you got, uh, not to mention the look and expansion part, like big on that part, right? Then you got Uranus, which is the planet of technology and advanced societal advancement, Um community and the collective. Uh, it's definitely a planet of unpredictability, um, you know, surprises. Really and truly, the operative phrases are anything can happen and expect the unexpected. Both of those in tandem are in play at this time during, on account of this train, on account of this conjunction. But how that could look is, um, well, I can, I'll say, I won't give any detail for protective purposes, but I will say that I have a firsthand testimony of how I was astounded by a, um, a surprising stroke of luck that really knocked me off my feet. Like I was not expected to encounter this wave of um a wave of prosperity that just like i said it just really was a surprise you know so you definitely with jupiter being in the mix and it being a more high vibrational frequency of luck and abundance you can definitely have keep your energy feel open for um a wave of good things you know things that you that are very favorable and quite savory, even by not even just in the material sense, but of course, definitely so, at least because both of those planets, the conjunction that I didn't say, are in Taurus. Now, I had said Uranus and Taurus, but I forgot about Jupiter yesterday. Interestingly enough, a lot of what I was saying, particularly about the effects that I was I was kind of foreseeing connected to the new moon, I'm sorry, the full moon in Scorpio, the pink moon that's coming up on Tuesday, really were quite relatable to the, um, the, 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 um, Taurus and the, damn it, damn you, Mercury retrograde, of uh, the Jupiter and Uranus conjunction. It was very relatable to that. So if you didn't catch my message yesterday, I definitely would would suggest that you tap in and see what you glean from it. Um, and a lot of what I was saying, not just about that moon, but also with throughout the message, I think was very, um, it was was quite quite well aligned with the conjunction today. So it's nice to know that I'm tapped in even when I don't know that I'm tapped in because certainly I was all mixed up and leaving out a whole planet such as Jupiter, which is the most pivotal planet perhaps in the entire conjunction. So, um, cause we know with Jupiter, it expands everything that it connects to. So with Uranus being in that, in that aspect and everything that that planet projects and affects, you can consider that that um, you can kind of like consider that, that that would be magnified, that effect would be magnified in conjunction with Jupiter. And then with it being in Taurus, which affects like our, our material world, 
not just the idea or ideal of expansion and luck and advancement and technology, but how it affects our everyday practical lives. So it literally could be as far out as technology and you know, global affairs that are about to be impacted in a grand way, may have already, you know, been impacted in a grand way, or your own personal affairs down to your occupation, you know, your home life. Like I said, wind, windfalls of abundance, stroke of luck, win, uh, winning streaks, all of that, all of that. Now, me personally, I have, um, I'm a Sagittarius and my son is in the second house, Taurus. So it may be hitting me a little bit different <laughs> than most. I, you know, I might really just be, you know, in the lucky seat right now with how, how it's hitting me, but I'll take it because the last few years or so haven't holistically been the luckiest. I've been blessed. I've been, I've been blessed and highly favored, but lucky uh, you know, it, it, it's it, that's a relative, you know, a term. So, um, anyway, so just get like a lot of what I was saying yesterday in the message was really about preparation for big, big change, like monumental change, course correcting, path redirecting change, you know, and you and really how you receive it. And then react, respond, and reproduce on account of it is all it gets to be, you know. Because even some a good change to to one could be perceived as the opposite to another, and that could have make all the difference in how it gets to be manifested on account of. But for me, you know, so far so good, and I'm so open to change on all levels, on all accounts, um, in every way, shape and form, looking to close out cycles. That was another thing. It's like about really it revving up the revolutionary in you, which I've talked about throughout this past week as well. It, it really hit on a lot of my messages throughout this week, which I thought was interesting when I read about it. Um, but really you pronouncing that, uh, renegade in you with the Uranus energy, you know, that almost provokes us to be a bit, um, a bit, um, what's the word, uh, uh, rebellious to some degree. It's like rebellion, but on account of the collective, you know, for the good of the people. It's the strangest thing, I think, with, with Uranus and Aquarius energy, because it's very much so collectively conscious, but it's also um, rebellious against the conventions of collective society, you know, or of society overall. So whatever it is that you may be championing for, that's for the greatest good of all. <clears throat> but that could also, as I've spoken about, particularly yesterday and throughout the week, may be against the grain, you know, may not be something that is um, as palatable as you know, what societal standards may, uh, may dictate, you know, do it, be it, have it, you know, this now is the time to go for it, especially if it's for the good of all, you know, for your good too, of course, like it has to start somewhere, of course, but if, if it's not just selfishly motivated, <clears throat> to the point where no one else benefits and, and even worse, it is to the detriment of many others. That's a pause. That's a cause for pause in consideration. But those um, big ideas and visions and dreams and things that almost seem like virtually um, fa too fantastical to really uh, to actually realize, those are the visions that you definitely want to shed some light on. You may or may not find yourself in a place where you get to actually power forward to the point where it comes into fruition instantaneously, you know, in this time because of some other transit uh, conflicts. 
but certainly it's an opportunity to really kind of like soak up the energy of this transit and and almost like rebooting your audacity to believe for that fruition whatever it may be and who knows like depending on where it hits you on your chart it might be the perfect time for you to jump out and um put the pedal to the metal on some idea new old or you know whatever but in any event it's definitely no time like the present to re re uh connect with those big ideas and visions and maybe even start to uh, reorganize a point of um, of of uh, initiation or um, what's the word that I was looking for? Initiation and execution. There it is, because we are headed into a full moon. So with that, there's always if it's a particularly new project, there's always consideration as to whether or not this is the proper time. But what you can absolutely do is reflect and, as I said, uh, plan, take inventory, gear yourself up, you know, put all your ducks in a row, load the gun, uh, get the get the arrow in the holster as a good Sagittarian would, you know, allow your your mental space as um, from that Uranus, Uranus um, energy to allow you to think outside of the box of what maybe once before you saw it very singularly. Now you might have a different inspiration that expands the concept or the creativity or the inspiration that much more than what it was before. If it was, if it is in fact the case where you're revisiting something that you may have shelved um, in the past, there's a reason for everything. If something hasn't quite, um, hasn't quite materialized at this point in time, it could very well be because there was more information that was needed or the timing, um, you know, needed to align even at such a time as this where we're in a transit that hasn't happened since 1941, almost a whole century ago, almost, you know, um, everything is in divine timing. So I'm just saying that anything is possible and expect the unexpected. So if you are, um, if you have the capacity to reconsider some aspect of you um, that you would want to reignite or regenerate, then certainly you are welcome and invited to the audacity to believe that anything can come of it at this time with the proper um the proper intention, motivation, and cultivation of your creativity. And remember, it's not so much about the, re it is an effect on the material world. So therefore you can expect material results and also behold yourself to material activity, like physical activity, but also consider the cosmic current. So like I said, you, you may not be able to push you know, that, you know, that green button, or like I said, put the pedal to the metal, but you can absolutely get the gears going. You know, this is that time and you'd be surprised how just putting the pieces together energetically, um, intellectually planning, you know, pre preparing things in such a way of, and, and all the ways that you have the capacity to do so at this time without pushing against the grain or, you know, anything like that, how at the perfect moment, the floodgates will just open for things to flow naturally, you know? So anyway, enjoy this energy. I say with the the point of expecting the unexpected, um, it, it would be most beneficial to expect the most prosperous and productive presence um, of now for for the projection of the future than anything. And knowing that at least if you're at that starting point, you can weather whatever, you know, you know, whether come what may, you know, whether it's exactly what you were expecting, more so, or different, less than, however, you know, you re-engage it, it'll be with the highest intention and, and energetic um, 
uh, motivation so that it can be alchemized into whatever will be most productive to move forward with or in or of or whatever as considering it being you. <laughs> All right. So anyway, I didn't mean to like kind of go in like that, but let's see. I just, I felt really excited about that when I, when I looked into it and I was like, oh shoot, I really have already kind of been talking about that. And then when I had the experience that I had today, which I can't really say right now, <laughs> um, I was like, oh snap, look at me all up in the universal flow and stuff. <laughs> that, that transmission was coming right through my um literally through my material experience you know like i felt like i was living the energy today so which is not really rare but still for the purposes of this message it was quite exciting so let's see where we are today great expectations three of pen three of wands Great things to look forward to on the horizon on the count. What comes before this is the two of wands, meaning you've already put in some work for something. Yeah, exactly. For independence, prosperity, um, health, wealth, material. This is that energy of your material world being affected from a spiritual perspective. Like you've already kind of cultivated a security for yourself spiritually, energetically, and then it becomes a physical realization where you feel secure, independent, um, stabilized, you know, content. You know, this is like, like I said, sometimes living in your own little world, you can expect to have the privilege of this, of this experience um, more and more and more, because uh, from what I had, from what I felt today, it was like, oh, this is the beginning. And it, so it starts that now I finally get to just look forward to bliss, you know, goodness and well-being. Like I've been waiting to feel, you know, how we wait for the other shoe to drop. Well, I've been waiting for that that shoe on the good foot <laughs> to drop. Where I knew, I always knew I was, I was privy to it. I knew I was worthy of it. I was just waiting for it to fit like Cinderella. <laughs> like, you know, like I left it behind somewhere in a past life or something. And I'm like, where is my glass slipper now? Enough is enough. <laughs> I've been riding in pumpkins too long. And, you know, I felt the energy before I had the physical evidence of my experience today. And, and this is that expression, like being in expectation, believing for, knowing that something good is coming, knowing that you're deserving of it, knowing that you've already put in work to rightfully have that expectation, even if it's like spiritual or energetic work, it, it still counts because cleansing your um, force field to be magnetized for good things is the hardest work you'll ever do. It's really and truly, that's this energy here. Like it don't get no harder than that to purge the things that don't attract prosperity and high vibrational results. Sometimes you don't even know where to start with that work, let alone how to advance, you know, advance it and, 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 and enhance it. So, you know, that's a great feat for someone. And here's the realization of your labor right here with the nine of, of pentacles, just one shy of the 10, which is the fullest expression of, um, of, of, financial stability and generational wealth and blah, 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 partnership and legacy and so much and so forth, you know, but it seems to me that you can look forward to even that much at this point in time, because I mean, if you got into the nine, certainly that's fuel for the confidence to believe for one more. Like, what's one more when you've gotten to the nine, you know? Let's see what else we got here. I'm not going to be long. I know I always say that, but I'm really going to try not to be. 
And we got this. This kind of came up in the reverse. And I'm just getting like, you don't have to feel so guarded anymore. Like you're already protected. Yeah, exactly. This is the Ace of Wands, Four of Cups that's rejecting or, or missing an opportunity or rejecting some opportunity having walked away so maybe in dissatisfaction you you decided when you were dissatisfied to move on in some regard and then you found the stability that you were looking for which is the next step from the three of wands like what you were in, in expectation for here it go <laughs> you know is is like i was saying before not feeling like you always have to be guarded and in preparation for like poised for the resistance, you know, for the uh, the opposition, the, the other shoe to drop and always having to stabilize yourself, having like a, a contingency plan just in case, you know, something goes wrong. No, we off that. We off that. There's always discernment and a protection for your energy just... I feel like the protection comes from this this spirit of great expectation now, like being able to finally see the faith of the future in action, you know, in, in fruition, I should say. Like having that, um, the more and more your ships sail in, the less and less you feel guarded to, um, the less and less you feel you need to be guarded for the worst, if that makes sense, you know, as good things just keep on happening, you can it, it evolves your your propensity to believe for more more good things, and that in itself is what magnifies your your attractive force field. And then, of course, the 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 reaction to that is that lo and behold, more good ships come in to the point where that balance is so disproportionate of um, negative expectations and positive ones that it almost like cancels itself out from feeling like, oh, there's always going to be something I got to, you know, all my life I had to fight type of energy. Like you don't have to feel that way anymore. And you have evidence to support that, um, that, that reality. Oh. King of Wands. Yes, that's right. Look at him looking like, and it's funny because this is like the ultimate protector here because he's looking like enemies who, where, what, how, <laughs> from, from, like, don't even have to get off the throne to protect his energy you know not this is somebody that doesn't have to physically fight anymore and then it's in the masculine form of course as the king but it just could be that masculine frequency in us all to be um well asserted in our creativity and in our power the projection of our power our pro our protection our um our courage and confidence to create without opposition or um, interference. It's like it doesn't even exist with the King of Wands. When they want to do something or they want to have something, they already, they, 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 they project that from their being. It's like, I'm the King of Wands. So whatever it is I decide I want to do or have, is, is generated from the confidence of my being before I even lift a finger, let alone get up off the throne, you know? So things kind of just fall into place, you know, more or less um, seemingly effortlessly, but it's not effortless because like I said, this is all wand energy. So it's still from the projection of passion, which can easily be perverted if you're not careful. It can even be underdeveloped you know, like where you find yourself lusting over things that aren't even in your best interest and you absolutely can attract that to you as well. So it still comes from the position of empowered passion, knowing what is 
profitable, what's purposeful, and um, what is productive to to um, to pronounce project your energy toward, you know, because you almost have to be super careful with the King of Wands because they can be so attractive in every way, shape, and form that it probably takes more energy, like I said, at this point, to be mindful of what you're calling into yourself and into your 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 energetic space than it is what you can't get your hands on, you know, because it's literally a matter of what you have the audacity to believe for, you know, and don't get me started on this being the king of wands who will actually, who, who could actually go and physically pursue something, you know, the prayer and hope would be that that objectivity is pure enough that, um, you know, whatever it is that is to be obtained is for someone's well-being or for someone's higher, highest good. But what the King of Wands, it says to me, let's see what's at the bottom. Yeah, oh, look at this. All these little wands now. Yeah, but this is like new beginnings of good news, something productive. Again, like even if it's fresh and new, it still has a positive, um, it has positive potential. You know, and it's the King of Wands in his masterful state of creativity that knows a good um, opportunity when they see it. They know a good idea of a of, of, of productive inspiration, um, a, a good invitation when they see it. They, they're not going to four cups pass up an opportunity that could... Or they will pass up an opportunity that may look good, but still not meet a certain standard. So it, it's a balance between all of those things, especially now. I'm probably saying that now, and this is probably so fire intensive because of the, the conjunction that we just talked about. Because there's so much that you're going to be um, calling into your your uh, experience right now. Maybe things that you forgot about that you wanted and now here they go. And it could have even been when you were in a state that was less mature. But still, like I said, it, it, it still has magnetized to you nonetheless, because at once upon a time, you sent the vibrations out to call it in, like, you know, almost threw that fishing line out. And, and it's something is a lot of things have have caught on. So it does take a discernment of um, consideration to say, now that this thing has presented itself, is it actually even what I want? Does it fit into this mature scope of creativity that I'm on now? Is this something that I wanted when I was a young person or when I had less wisdom and, and knowledge and wisdom, less experience? You get to you get to discern that. Then the good thing is that you you'll have so um, hopefully you know there'll be so many uh, choices that you won't feel in a position. It it'll the the good problem to have is to discern between a plethora of options and not so much a deficit as it could have been in the past, where you almost feel like, well, damn, I got to take what I can get, you know, or pursue something that is a bit of a settlement or a little lackluster or whatever. It's like now you may have multiple things that stimulate your passion that actually, believe it or not, are a derivative of your your projected passion. And, and you may or may not be able to engage or encounter or indulge in all of them. And you may or may not need to or want to at this time now that you know what you know. So there is that too. You know, the other side of the coin is where you, where you may have a lot to choose from. It may, you know, to stay in this point of mastery as the king of wands, not necessarily the knight you would want to kind of keep yourself balanced to just consider what is the best of the options, what actually makes sense and what is um, 
connected to keeping you streamlined to your purposeful passion, your most purposeful passion. Otherwise, it can veer into that into that fine line, um, the, over that fine line into lust or distraction, and that could derail the whole situation, put you right back to where you were, where you have to protect your energy all over again, and where, again, you have less high hopes and expectations for anything good coming in because you didn't distorted your energetic field with too much that is just not you know, just not on your wavelength, let's say it like that. And that could be people, places, things, opportunities, um, habits. Speaking of which today with all this fire energy, you know, maybe it is, it's all right for you to blaze up one or two or whatever, or whatever, you know, but is that going to take you back into a habit that will have you smoking every day, every hour on the hour, or, you know what I mean? Like, where is your limitation? You know, where where before you may have had to um, be, be ultra protective of your energy to keep yourself from veering into those more dependent areas or those overindulgent spaces, which the fire signs are no stranger to, for sure personally attested, you know. Um, I've had plenty of stints, just to be honest, where I indulged in smoking and then before I knew it, I was smoking every day again when that wasn't even my intention when I started. It might have been a quick recreational one, two, one, two, and now I'm back on the what is it off the wagon on the wagon? I don't know. But now it's a it's a it's a habit, you know, it's a relentless habit. For me, in the place that I'm in right now, and this is my um, consideration, now, it doesn't have to be yours, but the place that I'm in now, that's not productive for me to to indulge in any way, shape, or form in something that I, that I can um, can grow a dependency on at this time. So for me, it's better to not do it at all right now than to do it even a little bit recreationally or just, you know, leisurely for the sheer um, protection of my vitality uh, and, you know, holistically speaking. But for you, it could be something different. It could be in a person. It could be at a, a place. It could be whatever. But I think this is definitely speaking to, like, having self-control over your indulgences and your sensational, your uh, sensations. Because we're here to experience the passion of life, for sure. You know, and, and, and maybe you shouldn't have to feel like, you know, I'm not in a place now where I'm like, I don't even want to go nowhere near somebody smoking because for me right now, right now, I'm saying, when I even smell it, it doesn't hit the same for me at this moment. It's not the same sensation. When I, There have been times when I've smelled it and I'm like, damn, I really want to smoke right now. <laughs> but that's just not where I'm at in this moment. So it really just... It's a matter of how you 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 just gotta govern yourself according to the protection of your creativity um, overall. Like the you know, like something could be immediately gratifying, look good, smell good, sound good, you know, even feel good in the moment. But consider the long term impact or results of that engagement. I don't know why I veered off into that particularly, but it must be important to say, and it is appropriate to say on a day like today, but you know, it's definitely, again, no tea, no shade, no judgment, because my vice isn't your vice, but we all have one, you know? And it's, and it's, no, it's, it's no condemnation at all for any of it. Pentacles. 
Oh, there's that puff of smoke, that illusion right there. <laughs> the seven of cups. Mm -hmm. But here's another offer. Now these are all quite pro like um uh, what do you call it? Not primitive, but we just had the page of of wands. Now we got the page of pentacles. Good news, good stuff. But why is it coming in such small increments is my question. So we got the seven of cups, which again is about discernment, choosing wisely, not alluding or deluding yourself to believe anything that is not, um, that's not true. You know, so that also could be in alignment with what I said, where it's like, Oh, I could just smoke right now. You know, I I I'm good. Like I ain't, I ain't gonna be I ain't gonna be hooked up on it. You know, it it's not gonna become a habit for me. It's not gonna become an addiction. I'm good to just just uh light one up right now for the day. Like mm, I don't know. <laughs> like for me, I don't know. I don't know if it would just stop there. Just spark up one for 420. Like, mm, I don't want to take the chance. <laughs> I don't even want to delude myself to think that I'm that strong in this moment unless I'm open to the possibility of it being carried on beyond today. And for me, I don't want that right now. I just I just don't. So um, you know, my the energy and the the vitality, the the um, enthusiasm, the focus, the drive, things that have been really like intensifying in me in ways that I haven't felt in a long time is more precious, right? Maybe that's what that is, this page of pentacles. I find that to be more precious of an investment and a commodity than a chill session or like, you know, uh, being... Um, numb or because they l let me tell you I like smoking I'm not gonna lie like I good good weed I love it <laughs> but when you're weighing it out it's like I love that feeling of kind of letting your mind escape and being at ease and subdued and blah 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 but I kind of need to be on my p's and q's right now I need my senses to all be on on a, online and I also need not to be dependent on having to revisit that uh that feeling and frequency um beyond this point you know what I mean so really it's just a matter of weighing that that investment and that opportunity to its true value for you for you now for some Weed keeps you calm, keeps you together, keeps you, you know, stable, keeps you from flipping out or whatever the immediate, uh, commo you know, the commodity of it is for you may be more valuable than everything else that you have, that you, that you don't have when you don't smoke it or whatever it is that you do when you don't indulge. But that's a personal decision, you know? And for you, that make, might make all the difference in your productivity than it does for me. So it's important to really know yourself, like back to that seven of cups and, and not be kidding yourself, not be lying to yourself or also not falling into the illusions that may be projected to you about what you think you need when in fact, maybe you really don't. You know, one thing about it is I never felt like I needed weed. I liked weed. You know, and of course the habit kind of just builds on itself. But I never felt like, oh, I gotta, I need weed to survive. I needed to think. I needed to chill. I needed to sleep. It was never that type of dependency. I just really enjoy it. <laughs> I really did, and I really do. I'm sure with the right kind of weed would still, to some degree, enjoy the feeling of it and and where, you know, it it takes you, but. Generally speaking, when it becomes a dependency is when it veers into that dangerous zone of imbalance, you know, and it becomes more of an addiction. Let's go. 
get a few more on the board. I really want to get out of here before my incense burns out. <laughs> Go figure. Now my incense, I need my incense. <laughs> Believe it or not, when I don't have incense, I feel so incomplete not the same energy in my home when I don't have incense burning at some point in time. All right, but yeah, here we go. Night of Cups, a night, another night. All this lower vibe, lower frequency energy, I'll say, lower caliber. But we got the Two of Swords on the bottom. What is this? I feel like this is like being kind of like protecting you from the fears and, and illusions and obscurities that would, that provoke that darkness within you of which I was just talking about. I really didn't mean for this to, to turn into like a just say no type of, <laughs> type of reading, but it's something about her being blocked or resistant hmm, to the moon energy, which can be mystical, mysterious, definitely in opposition to the sun. You know, it can drudge up like those denser uh, subconscious emotions that are sometimes the things that do draw us to escape so maybe that's what this is like almost like a resistance to escapism and really being one with this moon energy knowing that it's just as much a part of you as the sun is you know it's just the reflective force and finding a way to to seeing a way to find value in that energy, kind of like to what I was saying, like when it becomes a dependency to escape or to find relief or self-soothing, it usually does call for a deeper dive as to why. So why is that the case? Why do you need anything? People, places, things, whatever. What is the value of that for you compared to the void that it may be filling? So this is, to me, the energy of like someone that may want to be resistant to taking that deep dive because it may be too mentally, or it could be the things that you actually don't even know, like the information that you're not privy to um, subconsciously that does contribute to the decisions that you make and the energy, the energy of your force field overall. Because your habits certainly do um, certainly do uh, surge your force field, good, bad, or indifferent. There is a charge there. So it would definitely be wise to, in, to engage that shadow side of yourself to know what does lie beneath and to um, like excavate those darker and deeper emotions so that you ultimately can alchemize those as well. So they're not just lying dormant or as some undercurrent to your energetic force field that is untapped or unknown, that if nothing else, you at least know why that current runs deep and, and what it consists of, what's the consistency of it. And that will put that in itself would put you in even a more empowered position to make something of it and not for not to allow it to kind of make something of you, you know, to some degree. But that's the energy of someone that could be resistant to that deeper dive or that just doesn't know, you know, or, or feels like there's a disconnect in that knowing or that um, that knowledge and awareness. Hopefully not out of fear, though. The moon, the night, the shadows are nothing to be afraid of. As I said, you can alchemize that energy, too. Hell, you could come to terms with your vices as, exactly as they are. But like I said, at least knowing why and how and, and what it affects and what it doesn't 
is also contributing to you exercising a level of control and not being bound to dependency. Off of the moon card, yeah, that's definitely somebody that is objective in their decision making, not not deluded or distorted at all. And that's really kind of where you'd want to be, which is why in my message, I think it was yesterday that I said it might be wise to be sober minded through this transit. I didn't really holistically know why I was saying that particularly in terms of the conjunction but for this moon energy I was I was particularly talking about that because there feels like an intensity in connection to it where you would want to really engage whatever um truths or changes may occur in an in an uh in a pure unaltered state of mind that's what i'm getting here with the queen of swords like really be in a position to you know because it's like you you process things differently when you're under any type of influence that's unnatural then when you have a clear mind perspective is the difference between making something better and making something worse and in such a delicate transit as this you want to have your head on straight to be able to see something for exactly what it is and be empowered to alchemize it to the to the greatest of your energetic capacity not see it as a distorted reality and then um approach it with distortion or uh, misunderstanding and then alchemize that into something you know it almost take morphs into um an experience that it was never meant to be on account of how you engaged it you know like i don't know there's something there with that in this moon that makes sense like you need to be in a position to consider all possibilities as the queen of swords will but then to make an objective almost you know to some degree emotionally detached maybe not holistically because she still is a feminine but to not be so emotionally driven in that engagement. Yeah. You know? It could it literally could be like a confrontation in the in a commu a com, um a communicative sense, like somebody coming to you, which could be it. You know, we're winding down from Mercury retrograde and then now this with today for 420 and the full moon in Scorpio and on Tuesday, it's like you don't know what's coming out the woodworks or who could be coming out the woodworks at, in a last ditch effort to connect with you, confront you, you know, whatever, offer you something, talk to you about something, bring closure to some situation. And imagine if you are in some altered state of mind or energy, how different a conversation can can and cannot go in that regard you know like think about some old conversations or occurrences where you kind of wished you would have been sober <laughs> or wished you would have been in a more objective state of mind maybe less emotional it could even just be that not even or less passionate more you know with the two of swords is also given like being more indifferent to some degree not pro or against anything in particular but just being open to engage the truth and the reality especially with the queen of swords the truth and we did have the ace of swords yes so it could be some revelation or unveiling of information especially with all these pages and nights it could be some information that's coming your way and you need to be in a grounded space of reception to respond and react um productively 
or you would want to be. You don't need to do anything, but you you might want to be. So that's not, of course, oh, look at that, healing, yes, star card. There, there's something closing up here, and there's an opportunity to advance on account of how whatever this is, is encountered. And like I said, it's the difference between the best and the worst of an outcome. And you would want to put yourself in the position to have it work out best in your favor. It may or may not be so for whomever or how whatever is on the other end. But as far as you're concerned, if you're functioning in the highest frequency, your supreme frequency, that will assure that you can stay on this trajectory toward destiny without being your path being um, detoured, particularly by outside interference when, you know, we can be so susceptible and delicate to that interference. But at this point in time, as the King of Wands and as the star, the Queen of Swords, like you're you've you've built and trained been conditioned now at this point to be unshakable and unmovable. So to allow anything to kind of take you off of that off of that path is it's not ideal, you know. And like I said, that's people, places, things, habits, thoughts, uh attractions, temptations, all of it. You know, it's 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 like I don't know. It's like it's like showtime now or something. I don't know. <laughs> like if the dress rehearsal was cool. You you know your lines. You 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 know you know the motivation of your character. You are cemented in the plot, you know, like you have a great chemistry with the fellow cast or at least you, you know, you're in a position to be open to that chemistry one way or another. And it's just like, it's, it's five minutes to show time. Now is not the time to go have a couple shots. Maybe after the show is over, you can celebrate a little bit, maybe. But right now it's like, you wanna be, you wanna be, you know, in your A-list frequency for this performance, for this presentation of you of sorts, you know, even if it's not like a show, but just you, as I said, from the transit, like emerging as the revolutionary that you are in your own right, whatever that is, this is that energy here with the star card. All right, a few more at the bottom, just because I wanna get a nice strong pyramid here. Look at that, temperance, yes, that's balance. That is absolutely self-control, patience, moderation, that's that. Mastery, alchemy, you being in such a cleansed um, spiritual and, and, and physical space that you can, as I said, make the most out of anything. This, to me, is read spiritual alchemy with the temperance card. No matter what comes your way, what confrontation, what temptation, what expectation, however it presents itself in true form, in material form, <clears throat> here up under this <clears throat> page of pentacles, is what you have the capacity to um, to balance in a way that will be uh, powerful, you know, with the temperance card. Like that's just not, that's just not regular shit right there. That's like power, uh, even of an ethereal essence that is coming from you or that you at least have access to. So it could even speak to what you have access to in terms of healing and gaining like a more grounded, uh, footing by way of your energy and your your uh, self control. Like as long as long as you decide that that's what you. When I stop smoking, 
it wasn't, it didn't take, you know, once you make a decision about what it is and what it isn't, it really didn't take much at all. Like I said, I only, I almost feel like 420 was the last time, but it may have been like a week or so after that. But by Mother's Day, I know for sure that I wasn't smoking. And so even in that short range of time, considering with someone, you know, I've taken some long extensive breaks. As a matter of fact, I had a long one before I took this one, but for the most part, that it's been a habit for years, you know, but you, it could be that fast of a turnaround that once you realize the correlation between your force field and the habits that you commit to, or the, just the energies that you are connected to, and you weigh those options as it is here with the temperance card, and you make a decision as to what matters most, you'll have the the spiritual support to to commit and devote to whatever decision that you are um <clears throat> that you that you are motivated by you really do you will you do yeah. strength come on somebody strength exactly to have the authority over your primal nature, not to let it overpower you, not to condemn it either, because that's not helpful, especially if you're trying to find balance and self-control. It doesn't help to be kicking yourself every time you do return to doing something or to someone or a thought or whatever. You know, it definitely matters to be graceful with yourself, but it's certain it's certainly as you make a decision is as sure as you have the strength to carry it out period and this and the spiritual support <laughs> wow <clears throat> the <clears throat> and this is like trauma with i don't know why i can't <clears throat> clear my throat right now that's crazy <clears throat> what energy don't want me to speak on this like what that would be about right because this is what what would what, what um adverse energies would would rather you operate out of trauma and fear and um disappointments and sadness depression the things some of the things that make you like i said make you reach for those comforts um, and those dependencies that aren't even true anymore because this is past energy. So this is not what you currently, you know, are, are facing or dealing with per se, or, you know, it could be, but it could also just, you know, be projecting, like I said, the, the, um, the anxiety for a reoccurrence of those traumas and those disappointments and things like that. But certainly the self-soothing doesn't eliminate it. If anything, it amplifies it. Yeah, and here's the victory over that, um, you know, that, that stagnancy. To even, again, be able to alchemize the worst of life's experiences, to be victorious in light of it all. Shoot, victorious on account of it all, to some degree, is what I just heard. Like, some some things that have happened have, have been favorable, but had it not been for those things you may not be in the position of success or victory that you're in. Go figure. So still, it's about like releasing yourself from a mentality of stress and and uh, loss and, and fear and, you know, those lower frequencies of thought that are contrary to this objectivity here that that actually help to cloud your judgment as in that seven of pentacles that of which you really do need because you don't want to be making decisions out of pain and and hurt and disappointment and past fears you know or failures and such it needs to be with a fresh perspective of 
uh, fortitude, with victory already in mind. Great expectations, three of, three of wands. All right, two more. Of course, I didn't make it past, make it before the, um, the incense, damn it. <laughs> Ooh, new agreements, new contracts. Yeah, new contracts, breaking those old cycles and contracts, those um, expectations, entanglements even, and realigning with the best agreements for you and even with yourself you know like recommitting to yourself like no I don't need that and I don't want that or this is this matters most now or this is what takes precedence in this moment this is this has a greater value you know you it's okay to break some old agreements even with yourself that perhaps at a time held a great deal of wealth. I mean, of I almost said weight. I meant to say weight, but I said wealth and worth that may or may not, you know, yield the same results at this point. It's okay to renegotiate. There we go. To renegotiate the terms of agreement with yourself and also with people, places, and things outside of you as needed. Maybe to break some contracts altogether. <laughs> For real, what's under here? That's right, as the Queen of Wands has the courage and confidence to do and recreate something new and favorable for herself. The feminine counterpart to the King of Wands. Mm-hmm that can literally create from any vantage point. Again, just as important as to what you're attracting though, as it was with the King of Wands, because in this regard, this is a reproductive energy. So whatever you're calling in is what you're going to produce. Reproduce. It almost can become a part of your being before it manifests outwardly. It can be consumed and ingested. Like, yeah, there's like an insemination process here, you know. It's... So if we're talking about relationships, definitely be particularly selective, I would say, about what you allow yourself to commit to consciously and also subconsciously with the moon here. You kind of got to be, be mindful on both fronts because you, you could have done a lot of clearing and purging and purifying subconsciously and then allow one misaligned um, arrangement to you know, access to your energetic force field that could almost reinfect you all over again and therefore reinfect those subconscious spaces of which you produce and, and, and um, manifest from the most that, like I said, that undercurrent that it's hard to kind of get to or take that deep dive into. But once you do, and once you've cleared some things out, um and allowed spiritual assistance to help you with that. That's what this is. Like this is that trauma and that undercurrent that you have, you could have been running on the fuel of, many of us have been for most of your life before you even realized that compartment existed, <laughs> let alone how to cleanse it out. And then to have taken control over that space and allowed the cleansing and purging to take place, at least to some degree, is what has supercharged you more or less to now be in the position of this masculine, feminine um, power force. 
you definitely wouldn't wouldn't want to realign with anything that would corrupt that at this point going against your better judgment against your your highest integrity against spiritual alignment falling into patterns that are outdated now even to you on a conscious level at this point you know like even drinking when you don't even like to drink all like that or you kind of put that down or you don't drink as much you know i guess maybe just be conscious of the energies that um tempt you or <clears throat> that uh what's the word that i'm looking for that um influence you in ways that have already been released or that you can foresee could be a detriment to you operating at your best period only good good contracts that people with people that are on the same page and there's no tea or shade to anyone that presents themselves to be in communion or connection but you are the deciding factor and you know the objective force that gets to say yay or nay with no apologies the queen of wands the queen of swords is not apologetic or super emotional or the queen of wands for that matter about saying yes or no it's very direct sure certain you know and to the point and for their best good because they know their energy is too is too important to be tainted she knows that her intelligence is too um, supreme to be tried or to be um, to be uh, insulted. Her energy is too potent to be impure. You know, it's like you got to know where you at, which what the worth is, and then decide what gets to connect accordingly. And it's, it doesn't mean that that potential connection isn't good for something somewhere. But you know what you're expecting at this point with the three of wands. Just don't divert from that. You know, like I think that's pretty much the point. You know, you know what shifts that you're looking to come in, and it's not the <laughs> the Nina, the pin, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. <laughs> As a matter of fact, had had the uh, yeah, well, here's the um, here's the emotion here. Exactly, you know what your your love is worth. Your energy is worth. The essence of you is worth, which is why you don't pull no punches on the contract. You don't you don't take no uh, raw deals. I was gonna say if if the natives had seen had known what they know now, they would have sent them ships right back to where they came from. But in essence, we wouldn't have the America that we do today for good or for bad. You know, maybe some of us wouldn't have even existed to some degree. So. <sighs> It's all divine, I suppose, I suppose. But either way, <laughs> either way, anyway, if they had known better, perhaps they would have revered, they would have protected their, the land and their culture and, you know, their, their legacy differently, at least, than they ultimately did. They would have been more on guard and um and perhaps a little less vulnerable and there's no shade to them because it just is what it is that is nothing wrong with being a good person and wanting to love and nurture and be compassionate and connect to others and you know the, to just give the best of you because it feels good when you're in the vibration of the queen of cups like you feel just as as satisfied giving love as you do receiving it but discerning on whom on who and what gets to to experience that is top priority now more than ever before yep not or lest you end up oh yikes lest you end up in the nine of wands or in the eight of eight of swords my goodness that was a terrible way to end <laughs>
this could also be folks that wish that they could kind of keep you locked up and captive to themselves, like keep your energy all to themselves and maybe try to. That's what I'm feeling. Don't ask me why that's coming up out of nowhere. But they had a certain um, invested interest in keeping you as subdued to your potential as possible, as unaware and vulnerable to attack as as you they, you possibly could be, particularly by way of your mental stability. And this could be energies that that did a lot, you know, actually took action toward in that regard, you know, to keep you stuck and stagnant. But when you're operating yet again with all this with this queen energy and even the um the masculine as the kid we had the we had the only only energy we didn't have was the queen of pentacles as far as the feminines but we got the king of wands we got the queen of swords we got the queen of cups and we got the temperance here that's balancing all things out so the only prison that is destined for you is the one that you allow you that you assign yourself to that you literally allow yourself to be captive of and the same with this binding here and the wand energy it's like anybody that's still looking back over their actions with disdain for anything else but their own you know in any other way but considering their own accountability and responsibility is holding themselves captive at this point. No, Nobody else is responsible for that or accountable for that. Like everybody, as in that um, beginning nine of, of pentacles energy is responsible for the cultivation of their own creativity. No excuses, no, no, um, I don't even know what I was going to say. Like, no ex no concessions <laughs> yeah that part so yeah like just as open and fluid as you get to be to the energy that is free flowing at this time you know it's like you don't have to be on guard to protect yourself in the ways that you were before like in that paranoia or um distrustfulness of self with others. You've cultivated enough wisdom by way of experience to kind of see, you know, discern what that looks like. And that's the protective piece. But you keep that frequency of security by way of integrity. And I think that's the reason for me speaking more about the addictions, the habits, the um, the you, the impulses, the um, the ways in which we depreciate our creative force field or dumb it down or put it in, you know, jeopardize it, I should say. That's our protective shell and shield. So if those securities are down, that's when you allow yourself to be more vulnerable to outside um, attack and influence. But as long as you are catering to the best of what you need for you, the best of who you can be, keeping your eye on the prize as to why you're doing it all in the first place, it's impenetrable. There's nothing that can, can hold you back in, in tandem with the amazing and powerful um, energy surge that's available to tap into, that resource of of energy upgrade that you can tap into, but you kind of got to keep yourself on the frequency to resource it because just as easily as you can tap into it is just as easily as it'll kick your ass out if you're not operating on the proper vibe to align with it, you know, and that's the lifeline right now. I think that's the whole point of it for me is that if, if it's a matter of temporary or immediate gratification that could jeopardize my long-term stability and, um, you know, uh, affluence and um, long-term, like long-term, uh, what's the word that I want to use? 
um, just my the longevity, you know, of of my of a blissful experience here in spirit and in truth. I'm going. I'm going to take the ladder every time now. Once upon a time, I might have rolled the dice more than I should have. You know, that's the Sagittarius in me as well. But these days, like I'm bet, I'm betting on, I'm betting on black. <laughs> I'm betting on black, okay, you know, and sometimes that black is the unknown, like I said, not even holistically knowing the big picture of what I'm moving toward or stepping into, but knowing that it got to be something amazing on the horizon, certainly better than what I could be finding myself escaping from in the present moment, you know, so anyway, Enjoy this energy surge. Enjoy the surprises of life. I pray that they are positive, productive, exciting, um, that they encourage you to just keep going and whatever, like keep going and keep expecting the best, you know, to keep expecting the best of yourself and holding yourself to that standard and expecting for your force field to magnetize the absolute best that the divine has to offer in this lifetime, for sure. I pray that for everyone. I really, really do. For myself as well, my legacy, my progeny, my partner, and everything else in between and beyond, I certainly do. So with that being said, I thank you for listening and watching. Until next time, as always, I leave you with Peace.